You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Solari and today we're talking about letting life unfold. So many times we want to control life, right? We want to have things in a certain order or check those boxes, but it's not, not like how life is. We have to let life unfold organically. It's kind of the mystery of it, you know, how will it all end up? So we want to focus on that yet at the same time be, you know, intentional and tenacious and going after your goals and dreams. So if you want to call in, again, that's 800-333-0001. I am standing by to take your calls. Also, if you need support on today's topic, feel free to reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com, and we will make sure that you get the resources that you need. Now, I want to make sure that as we talk about today's show theme, which is letting life unfold, that you consider where in your life do you have a challenge that you're facing? And, and what is that that you're so trying so hard to attain? And we want to make sure that today we give you that relief that you can let go, that you can enjoy the journey and not feel like it has to be a certain way. And sometimes that's hard. I get it. You know, there's so many times that I'll wake up in the day with this to-do list that's probably longer than it can actually be done. But at the same time, you know, I want to have a game plan for the day. But things will always happen that take me off course. Even yesterday, my computer went haywire. I have talking uh, software that reads my emails to me, and it stopped talking. So I went to another computer, and you know what? That one wasn't working either. I had another issue altogether. So I didn't just throw my hands in the air and say, that's it, I'm done. I got creative. I ended up turning to people on my team and, and seeing if they could help me read emails or respond back to people. And when, when life gives you a challenge, it's just about finding a way to get over that hurdle, around it, under it, whatever you got to do, because we want to let life unfold naturally. So I'm getting word for our producer that we have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, thank you for calling in. How can we help you? Uh, so I'm currently a, a senior in college. I'm in my last semester. And I'm worried about what I'm going to do after graduation in terms of living because i want to live with my friends in San Francisco, um, but I'm not sure if financially I'll be able to do that. Um, so the other option would obviously be moving back in with my mom, but I feel like I'd be happier, you know, living on my own in San Francisco, um, you know, with my friends and everything, but I'm really afraid about this financial burden that I might have. I don't want to have to call up my mom five months into my lease and be like, hey, can you cover, you know, this month's rent? So I'm in a bit of a bind coming to a decision about that. Well, first of all, thank you very much for your honesty and what you're facing because finances is a really tough conversation to have. It's like, you know, what do I do? And I actually was there at one time in my life as well. I remember uh, back when I graduated from college, I wanted to move to Los Angeles and I had to really think about what that looked like, how much I was going to need to to make that move here. And, and, you know, I ended up working two different jobs, living at home, but I gave it a measurable amount of time. I said, okay, I'm going to give myself six months. I'm going to make as much money as I can in six months. And part of the scary part about moving home for so many people is, will I ever leave? Right? Mm -hmm. Do you get right, that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, will I leave? Will they start to depend on me? And then I feel bad leaving. I'm sure you mm -hmm. felt that too. Right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. So if you're open, if everybody is on the same page and, you know, you really take a measurable amount of time and go home and figure out, you know, how much do you want to make before you would move to San Francisco? What would rent cost and actually over budget? 
Don't don't go to the dollar. Don't go under. Go over, <laughs> over budget. Figure out what that would be so that when you make that move, whether you have a job or you don't have a job or you lose your job or whatever happens, rent goes up, that you have a nest, enough of a nest egg that you feel comfortable. And nothing is worse than financial stress, really, right. because mm-hmm. it takes away your ability to sleep. It can cause people to have health issues. And overall, you want to launch into any chapter of your life with excitement, with ease. And so what does your hunch tell you? What does your gut tell you right in this moment? My hunch tells me to to do it, but to start preparing, like, now. Like, now. Okay. now. Yeah, okay. So, so, so if your hunch like says can, do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So between now, I, now, I and your hunch, mm-hmm. how much time does that give you? Um, I don't plan on moving until um, September. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you have time. You have mm-hmm. time. So what you want to look at, so that we don't have to call mom in December, <laughs> right? Yeah. You want to look at how much money do I need to make? And how many jobs might I need to do to make that money? And, and there is, there is nothing, um, uninspiring about that. That is awesome. That's a go-getter. That's a mover and a shaker and somebody who's going to make it happen. So Mm -hmm. if your hunch says, go to San Francisco, then I say you go to San Francisco. Okay. Is that, how does that feel? That feels really good to hear. And I feel like I can't do it. Need, needed the motivation to, you know, really, I really needed to hear it was mainly it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and just one last question I want to ask you. Are more people in your life telling you to do it or not do it? They're telling me to. It's kind of half and half. Okay. It's a split. So the, the, reason, the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because if internally your hunch says do it, and if by my saying, go for it, if that got you excited, then you have to find a way to quiet the voices. So mm-hmm. when you leave this conversation today and people are saying, oh, I don't know, and what if this happens, and what if that happens, you need to have a strong enough muscle within yourself to quiet those voices. Mm-hmm. And and so you want to make sure that you protect your goals, you protect your dreams, that you really allow yourself to, to live in that moment. Is that something you can do? Definitely. You can definitely do that. Woohoo! So who's moving to San Francisco? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going? Oh me, I am. You, that, that's that's awesome. right. That's yeah. right. It's not the it's not the girl on the plane already having a ticket going there. You're going there. So just remember okay. that and and be confident in those words. Okay? okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling in. Thank you so much. Okay. And I love that she called in about that question, right? Cuz sometimes we need permission. We need to say have someone say go for it. Do it. And sometimes you're going to get those people in in your life that will encourage you. And then sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're going to get people that are going to be the woulda, coulda, shoulda people and what ifs. And so really the the moral of the story here is it's really up to us to be the advocate for our life, the protector of our dreams. And that is really important so that, you know, as we surge out there in life and we try to go after things, that we do it with confidence, that it comes from our inner core. I know in my own life, there's a lot of things that people have said, oh, I don't know. And the thing is, is I I just put myself out there and I say, you know what? If this works out, great. I'm so excited. And if it doesn't work out, you know what? It'll be a learning experience. But either way, I have this conversation with myself that needs to happen, that, that, I, will, that I will do it, that I will succeed. And I want you to feel that as well. So we've talked today about making sure to quiet the voices of the people that are saying no. And we also want to make sure that we touch on the fact that when you do all this, you're allowing life to unfold naturally. Again, that is the whole point of what we're touching on today. So over the course of the show, I want you to figure out what is a dream? What is the goal that you have for yourself? What is it that you would like to attain? Let's connect those dots. Let's let life unfold. But yet, put yourself out there, because I want you to look at the end of your life 
that you didn't give up, you did not try, you went out there and you lived full out. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want and we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. We'll be right back. I'm Nancy Solari with the Living Full Out show. Stay with us. Professional skateboarder Tony Hawk here with Bugs Money and Daffy Duck to remind you to get moving every day. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you'll have the energy to skate through anything. <laughs> nice play on white, Doc. That's how I roll, Bugs. So whether you like to work the half pipe, now that's catching air, kick the soccer ball around, or dance in your room, just move it your way for an hour a day. The way you like to move, as long as you're moving. Carve out some time every day and get active. Because it's time to do a 180 on what you think exercise is. Because it can be whatever you want it to be. So be a player. Be a player. Get up and play an hour a day, Doc. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. At www.letsmove.gov. Let's hear that one more time, Doc. That's www.letsmove.gov. A message from the Ad Council and HHS. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. At 6 I make his breakfast. Every day I wake up at 5 to give dad his medicine. At 6 I make his breakfast. At 7 I shower. Every day I wake up for at those five. caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org/caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. I'm Sarah, and this is my story. I'm Ellen, and this is my story. One night, I was at a bar. One night, I was at a bar. I was having fun with my friends. I was having fun with my friends. I had one too many drinks. I had one too many drinks. I got behind the wheel to go home. I got a cab to go home. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. And all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. It happened so quickly, I barely had time to react. It happened so quickly, the cabbie barely had time to react. I swerved. The cab swerved. I can't believe it. I hit a guy. I cannot believe it. The cabbie just missed a guy. I wish I took a cab. Thank goodness I took a cab. You have the choice to save a life. Don't drive buzzed. It's a decision you'll never regret. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. If you think depression is all in a person's head, you're right. It's a brain illness. And like other illnesses, it has symptoms. Depression can make those who suffer from it feel hopeless. It can even lead to suicide. Learn how to stop depression from taking another life. Call SAVE, Suicide Awareness Voices of Education. 1-888-511-SAVE. On the web at save.org. I'm Alec Baldwin. Like any parent, I'm concerned about children's health. Many kids don't eat as they should and are at risk for long-term health problems like diabetes and heart disease. But here's good news. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and other low-fat vegetarian foods can protect our kids and keep the rest of the family healthy too. For a free booklet, call the Physician's Committee for Responsible Medicine at 1-877-685-KIDS or visit www.kidsgethealthy.org. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfulloutcom Now, here's Nancy. Hello, I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we are talking about letting life be. Now, I want you all to know I get it. It's easier said than done. And sometimes it's hard to realize, you know, how do we do that? How do we let go? Because a lot of times we're very committed. We're, we're, We're needing things to be a certain way. And I get a lot of clients that reach out to me over the week, and they deal with so many different challenges that they face. So, for example, people who are trying to have children, people who are looking for the love of their life. And, and they put themselves out there, and they go in circles. They feel as though every opportunity they go after, it just doesn't work out. And I know a lot of times it's easy to turn around and feel like that's a reflection of us. Like, what's wrong with us? You know, why do we not have what it is that we want in life? And I'm here to tell you today that it actually has nothing to do with you. I want you to always remember that life is a journey, right? It's, it's kind of like having a book, and you're the the main character, right? And everybody in your life is a supporting character. And just like if you were to watch a movie, like I love watching Lifetime movies, right? Um, There's always the villain. There's always somebody who, uh, you know, who makes you laugh, who's the supporter. It's really important that, just like a movie, that we recognize that we're going to have highs and we're going to have lows. And so as the writer of your own story, you know, you, you're going to have an ultimate goal of what it is that you want to achieve. But at the same time, you have to be able to let that unfold. You know, let the story of your life write itself. Rather than trying to write from the back of the book to the front, you know, let life unfold. I know for myself, I remember being diagnosed at 16 and the doctors telling my sisters and I that we would be going blind by 40. That was a big gulp. And at the time, I, got, I went in denial mode, actually. I, I kind of had to realize, okay, if I'm going to go blind by 40, I don't even know what that looks like, but if that's going to happen, what do I want to do? What do I want to achieve or see with my eyes before I can't? So then I kind of had to reshuffle my bucket list, right? And you might need to do the same. When we consider letting life unfold, what, is, what does that look like? What priorities might you need to change in an effort to be able to put yourself out there and and live a big life. So what I actually had ended up doing is I ended up putting my bucket list, a few items up close, such as going to Europe. I did that, went to school, got my degree. And I chose to put my career first because I knew that I needed my eyes to do that. I knew that I didn't need my eyes to do certain things. I could be a good friend and I could listen. I can even watch TV and I could listen. But things like reading a book and getting an education, things like seeing the world, the Eiffel Tower, you know, all the things that might be, you know, out there that we want to experience, that's what I had to do. Now, for you, I want you to think about today, what is it that you are striving for? You know, where do you feel like you keep hitting that brick wall? You keep going after it with the same method. Let's shake it up. Let's get a little bit wild, right? I want you to think about that goal, and let's just say, I'm going to put it out there, that you're trying to get a certain job, okay? And maybe you're looking on the job sites, you're applying for jobs. Well, what you're doing, actually, is you're applying for jobs with the masses, right? It's this public ad that goes out, and you're submitting your resume along with hundreds of other candidates, right? I want you to think about how can you creatively get the job that you want without having to be in the same group as those masses. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about what is the job that you want? What is the career that you would like to have? And then when you have that vision in your mind, when you have that crystal clear, at that point you want to think about, okay, what do I need to do to achieve that? And, you know, what resources might I need to turn to? What professionals might I need to, um, you know, talk to for support? What education might I need? And when you kind of explore all of that, that's going to open more doors. So rather than hitting this brick wall over and over again, 
you're actually able to open yourself up to new opportunities, but also things that maybe you hadn't considered before. That is how you let life unfold. Do you see that? By getting creative, by exploring new opportunities, that is allowing life to unfold in the way you want. Now, I also want to touch on the fact that sometimes things are going to happen in life and we don't, we don't understand why. And sometimes we might pray to God or turn to people in our life and say, I just don't understand why. And I'm not alone. I know we've all said that, right? We've all had that, that conversation with ourselves. Well, rather than fighting why something is happening in our life, again, let it unfold. You want to kind of take in what is the lesson that I need to, to get from this? You know, there's people that are, that attain a, to get a disability. It was unexpected that they lose their arm, they lose their leg, or they get a health issue that they're facing. And it's really hard to square the circle of why am I sick? Why did this happen to me? But then amongst that question of why are a lot of great lessons that we can learn. I said that to myself, why did I go blind, right? But what I've learned for myself is blindness has actually made me more patient. It's really allowed me to become more focused. I listen to people. I experience people through touching their hand or giving them a hug or, you know, really allowing their voice to be the lead for what I think they look like. So you want to look in your life if you're facing a health challenge or you have a, a disability that's come up in your life. It's what can you get from that? Why has life slowed you down? Maybe because it's time for you to rest. It's time for you to to take time to get creative, take on a new hobby, um, spend time with people. And, and so everybody's situations are going to be different. I mean, when I work with my clients throughout the week, it's amazing how the challenges, the array of them are all so different, but yet pain is pain. Frustration is frustration, right? So as I'm giving you different examples today, they may not all relate to you, but it's the resilience that we all need to have. It's that tenacious spirit. So it doesn't matter if it's that you're overcoming a health challenge or you're, you're feeling as though a job keeps slipping away from you or you're getting frustrated because you can't find that perfect relationship. It all has the same crux, the same um, burden. And so the whole point of this show and why we put this together for you each week is that we want you to feel free from that. We want you to to know that things are possible. But sometimes we have to change our view and what it is that we're trying to achieve. So as we go through the show today, I want you to think about what is that dream, that goal that you have for yourself? And how can we look at that a little bit differently? How can we put together a plan that is something new that you haven't already tried? And sometimes you have to get radical. You have to get a little bit outside the box. And that's what we want to explore today. So stay with us. We'll be coming right back after this break. And again, I invite you to call in if you need support on this topic. So I am Nancy Saloon. This is the Living Pull Out Show. Stay with us. We'll be coming right back after this break. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. 
Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really living. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Solari, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want and we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming But we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I am Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. So excited to have you with us today. And we are talking about letting life unfold. And what does that even look like or mean? Well, the thing is, is we're all going to have goals. We're going to have aspirations that we want to achieve. And you might even have a certain vision for what you think that looks like or how that should be attained. But it's not always going to work out that way. That's almost the joke of life is that sometimes... We have to let go. We have to let life organically unfold and and be led the way that we're supposed to experience this grand life that we're birthed into. So I want to go to our phone lines, though, because we are we do have a caller on the line. I want to chat with them and see what they're struggling with today. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. Hi there. It's a little loud in your in the background there, but um, I can hear you. Uh, what's going on? How can we help you? Um, so I have a friend, she's like seven years older than me. Sometimes she comes to me for some, um, challenges related to her work life. So like, since she's so much older than me, I can barely help, but I really want to help her. Like, can you give me some suggestions? 
You know what? Great question. So whatever she is going through with, with, relates, with, with regards to her work, right? Like you've never been there. Like you're not, uh, you're not, you know, you've never had that career path. But what you want to ask her about is you want to ask her about the emotions that she is feeling, right? Yeah. So when she's stressed, you have felt stressed before, right? If she's losing sleep at night, I guarantee there's something like a test or something where you've lost sleep at night, right? So whenever you're trying to coach somebody or give them advice or even just be a listening ear, you want to find common ground with them. And so that is what you would want to do with your friend is you want to think about, you know, where is it that you could give her guidance and be a, a and be a good friend and, 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 and listen to her. But at the same time, you know, not feel like you have to give her specifics. Now, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to have our producer mute your line because I have a couple more ideas I want to give you, but it's kind of loud. So we're going to mute that. But I know you can still hear me. Yeah, okay. So to this caller and to everybody listening, because her question is actually really, really good, there's going to be times when we're going to be faced with a, a question, a conflict, uh, a, an event in our life where we're not going to know what to do and we're not going to know how to best answer it. Uh, what advice to best give. And so that's why what this caller is asking is so important, especially as we talk about letting life unfold today, because all of our journeys are going to be different. If you've gone through abuse, if you've lost your job and you're in financial stress, you know, if you're going through a medical challenge, we're not all going to have those same experiences, but it is the emotions, it is the struggles, those are similar. So, for example, when I have a friend come to me in, in my life, and this is where I can relate to the caller today, when I have a friend come to me and, and they have something that they're going through, the one thing you don't want to say is, I completely understand, right? Because we can never say we completely understand. We haven't walked in that person's exact shoes, their same path. But what you can say is, you know what, I hear you, and I I am so sorry that you're going through this experience and, and you know, how, how does it make you feel? And let that person talk. They might say, I'm scared. They might say, you know, I, I just, I don't feel good enough. And the best thing that you can do, caller, as a friend, is let that person just deplete themselves emotionally towards you. Because sometimes when we keep pain, when we keep anxiety in our mind, in our heart, that's when we get sick. That's when we can't sleep. And so you want to be that kind of sounding board for them, arms wide open, bring it, you know, tell me your, tell me your stresses. So I hope that helped answer your question. And caller, I know that you're going to give that great advice, but it's not so much what you say. It's about just being that support for that person, letting them vent, letting them talk out loud, because honestly, a lot of times the answers are in what we say. It's like our, one of our callers earlier in the show. She was trying to decide if she should move to San Francisco or, or, or live with her mom. And it's when she actually heard herself talking and I said, what do you want to do? She said, I want to move to San Francisco. She just needed to say it. She needed to hear it and believe it. And so that's what you can do for your friends. So thank you so much for calling in with that topic. And so for everybody listening today, when we talk about letting life unfold, truly, that's going to be a big, a big statement that's going to have to match up against a lot of scenarios in our life, okay? For example, I remember in my early years when I was losing my vision, a lot of uncertainty. People would say, Nancy, what do you see? Or, you know, there'd be a part of me that didn't want to tell them that I couldn't see because... I thought it might turn them off or scare them away or cause them stress. So it was hard for me to say to them what I could see because I could barely verbalize it myself. And I remember this one time going on this date. It was only our second date. This guy was very sweet and it was romantic what he was trying to do. He wanted to take us on a gondola ride. That's where you go in a boat and the person rowing the boat sings and it's very romantic. Um, but I had not told him that I had night blindness. I only, all the other times that we had got together, we had seen each other during the day. So the thing is, 
is when he takes me to this surprise location. It is at night, pitch dark, and we we get to the top of the ramp, and he's like, go ahead. And I'm like, no, 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 I'll let you go ahead. And I was hoping that I could follow the moon shining on his hair. I was like, I'm going to use that as my guide. And I didn't feel like I needed to tell him that I couldn't see. I wasn't quite sure that I wanted to hold his arm or his hand. It was only our second date. And as we went down the ramp, I was thinking, I got this. I got this. I can actually not say that I'm legally blind, and he has no idea. But the thing is, somewhere along the way, he took a right, and I went straight. And you betcha, I walked right off the dock into the water, and it was freezing. It was so cold. And after my date fished me out of the water, and the gondola ride guy said, well, this has never happened before, and I'm thinking, well, you've never met Nancy before, my date was like, well, do you want to, do you want to cancel this? Do you want to, do you want to not go? And I said, no, 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 I'm going to go. And I got in that boat and I listened to the guy sing. And as I was thinking to myself, and this is where letting life unfold comes in, I'm glad that I pushed through it. I'm glad that I kept going. And what I learned is that I didn't need to look good. I didn't need to, you know, hold back that I couldn't see at night. Because what if I had hurt myself? What if I had walked off that dock, but I had, you know, knocked my head on something and, 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 and was further injured? That would not have been good. So it was a wake-up call for me. So what I want you to look at is as you go through life, as you let it organically unfold, it's not going to look the way that you design it to be. It, there's going to be those unknowns. And there's a saying, you know, if you want to, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, right? I don't know if you guys have heard that or not, but honestly, it is just like that because sometimes when we plan things to the T and we have all of our, our I's dotted, our T's crossed, you know, all of a sudden we're going to, we're going to lose everything on our computer screen, right? Oh my gosh, all my work, it's gone. That's when life pokes you. That's when it says, you know what? New plan. It's going to go this way. So I always say, be ready for the unknown. Embrace change. And that's a lot of what I talk about with my clients because change, the unknown, it can be scary. But it's also an adventure. So I want to give you all a challenge. We all have our favorite restaurants that we go to. You probably have your favorite entree that you always order. The next time you go to that restaurant, I want you to pick something that you've never had before something completely different and, and, and try that. I also want you to go to new venues. Don't go to the same places. I want you to go somewhere this week and meet a stranger and go up to them and compliment them. Or if you're sitting on a bus or on an airplane or you're in an elevator, I want you to not just turn to someone and say, how was your day? But turn to that person and say something meaningful. Say something even vulnerable. Because when you let life unfold, it's about putting yourself out there, being transparent, being open, being flexible. And, and that's what living full out means. So as we kind of round out today's show, and I'll be taking more calls in the next segment, I want you to think about what is that challenge that you are holding on to because you're giving it more power. When you're forcing life to go a certain direction, you give your power away. But when that challenge comes knocking on your door and you say to it, yeah, however it lands, I'm going to be just fine, you diffuse its power. So that's what I want you to focus on is think about what is that challenge? And rather than going after it the same way that you would, I want you to get creative. Whether that means that you have to call into the show today and we talk it out, or whether you contact a friend and say, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm up against and this is what I was trying to do to, to counteract it. What do you think? Switch up your plan. Do something radical. Do something different because that is what it means to live full out. Now, I want to make sure that if you need support on today's topic, that you definitely reach out to us at connectatlivingfullout.com. And I've shared with you my stories today, and we've had callers that have called in, and they shared with us what their challenges are. But we would also like to hear from you. That's the important thing is this community is all about sharing each other's stories, learning from each other. So if you have a story that you think our guests, our callers, everybody would benefit from, 
then we want you to write us at connect at livingfullout.com and let us know what have you overcome? What is that disability, that tragedy, that crisis that you encounter? How did you survive it? How did you get through it? And we would and really enjoy hearing from you. Again, that's connect at livingfullout.com. Also, make sure that you check us out each week because today's show and each show that we have is meant to be educational, only entertaining from the aspect that we all have common shared fears and stresses. But most of all, we want you to make sure that you get the support you need so that you can live full life in a big way. So stay with us. We're going to be taking more of your calls. I am Nancy Scaleri. This is the Living Full Out Show, and we'll be coming right back after this break. I'm always wishing you the best and hoping that you live full out. Stay with us. We'll be right back. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. So many comments on my comment. Hey, guys, check out my wait. new video game. Mom, what? Huh? Pew, pew. What'd you say? This huh? weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. It's against my religion. I'm giving my dog a bath. You can have pictures of that. Pressure gives me hives. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. Hold on. Let me ask my mom. Sorry, my webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. Unfortunately, I just had my clothes surgically attached to my body. If they got out, I might never be president. I'm already naked, under my clothes. Not even if you were all three Jonas Brothers. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. The more you ask, the less I want to. You're not the boss of me. Nudity makes me vomit. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that'snotcool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a, cool I want to be a football I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. What? What about our plan to win the lottery and start living? You know, travel the world on matching yachts. Wear enough jewelry to require a bodyguard. Vacation on the French Riviera. And then buy it. You know we're never going to win the lottery, right? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. 
This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Letting life unfold means that you keep your eye on your goal, your dream, that vision that you have. But at the same time, rather than being determined and fixated on things going a certain way, you want to let life organically just be experienced the way that it should. Let go. Let yourself live full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about letting life unfold. And it's so hard sometimes to just do that, right? It, it's it's hard to give over knowing that something isn't going to go the way we want. And it's scary sometimes to leap into the unknown. And somewhere in the middle, you have to muster the strength, the resilience, the the attitude of being positive. But that's when you are living full out because you're experiencing life. You're not just having a plan and, and sticking to that plan, you're letting life unfold, and that's what it means. That's what it's all about. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. Hi, thank you for calling in. How can I help you? Hi, so recently at my job, um, I had a boss who was a great leader, and we're all so happy to work for her, uh, but she has been let go. A new management has been brought in, and it has been very difficult to go into work with a positive attitude or um, go in enjoying my work. So my question is, how can I go into work with that positive attitude that I used to have and go back and see how can I enjoy that work again? Hmm. Well, first of all, let's hear it for all the really good leaders out there, right? Because those good leaders need to remember how much they mean to people like you. And even to me, because I get this. I've been there, right? Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you a quick question. Is this a forever job for you? Is this your, your ideal job, or, or do you see yourself in the next, say, year or two transitioning out? Uh, I see myself there in a year. Um, the team that I work with is really great. It's just that okay. not having that leadership in there, it's very difficult. Yeah. And and is it the one boss that's giving you so much stress, or is it that boss and their boss too? It's their boss. So it's it's pretty much your boss plus the higher up from there too, yeah. right? Correct. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of ideas I have. Number one, safety in numbers, right? So yeah. you want to make sure that you and your colleagues support each other, kind of have this pact. Mm -hmm. When there are people that are not, I guess, playing nice in the sandbox, when there are leaders that are not... Um, you know, being the most motivational and, and, and hearing you out. Sometimes you're going to need to find a way to communicate with them about what's going on. And I know it seems a little scary sometimes to do that because if you speak out, you worry you might lose your job or something like that. But the thing is, is the only way to have something change is to put yourself out there. And do it, of course, in the most professional way you can. But what you want to do is start with your your first boss, that person, and, and I would recommend a letter, something written, an email or a letter, and I would hand it to them, and I would say, I really enjoy this job. I identify with the, with the mission of the company. I have gratitude for the people I work with. And then you can say, I really enjoyed our previous boss because of X, Y, and Z. 
And then here's the key, okay? You, you don't want to pick at that person. You don't want to say all the things they're doing wrong, but you will just want to share with them what you need. And when you do that, then you're able to kind of have them consider change, but not like they're threatened. Does that make sense? It does. It really does. So mm. I would, if I were you, I would tell that, I would tell that person, um, you know, it would really help me out a lot if I could check in with you once a week, or if you could give me some positive feedback that really motivates me and gets my energy going. Or I think it would be great if once a week our office could do something where we get to know each other and we kind of lift the spirit of the office. Just kind of be suggestive, but in a positive way. I feel like this advice is Is that something you could do? Yeah, it's something very easy. Well, something that, you know, putting in and writing, it's so much easier for me to do with. Oh, it's such an easy well, I have no doubt, I have no doubt that you can get through this time, and I really appreciate you calling in, and we'll be wishing you all the best, okay? Thank you so much, Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. And for everybody who called in today, I so appreciate the calls and your willingness to let life unfold and figure out how to get past these challenges, because you know what? They're always going to be there, but we can get over them together. Our entire Living Full Out family thanks you for listening today. Remember, check us out if you have Alexa. You can hear the show there. Or go to your app store, whether you have an iPhone or Android, just look out for Living Full Out Radio. And of course, you can go to livingfullout.com to hear this episode and all of our episodes to stay motivated. Most of all, here's to your Living Full Out, and I'll see you on the next show. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.